Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spin all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, Tea Sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I have my homegirl, Emily, in the building. Hey, everyone. So once again, it seems like every time me and Emily get ready to do a podcast, I don't know if this is going to start being tradition or what. Yeah, it seems like it. (laughs) Right. First, we had Dick Cannon a few weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? His news leaked. Then, like, the the second time we did the podcast recently, we had Soldier Boy. Big Draco. A big Draco, honey. And then tonight, <laughs> I'm minding my own business, okay? Walking through the streets of Twitter, and bam, I get hit with Nelly's ping. Mm. Nelly done posted a, a damn video. They claim it was an accident. I don't know. But he done posted a video of him getting hit. And the comments are tearing him Draco. up. So the comments are tearing him up. They're saying everything from Nelly has a little Peter Weeder. Okay? Uh-oh, not little. Not packing. They're saying that they understand why Shanti left and never looked back. Unlike, <laughs> unlike her video, Foolish, where she came back. Um, they are going in. People are saying that the Grillo's giving some dry head. You know, needs to be sloppy top. I mean, all these professional peen suckers on Twitter, honey. I was I mean, in the video. I, I yeah, I. I mean, maybe I'm just not a professional. It didn't, I, I didn't watch it that long, honestly, because I didn't know who it was. Now I kind of want to go back and watch it again. But um, it didn't look like it was that bad. Like, it wasn't like no shade, but like, you know, Black China, like that whole thing where it was oh, like, no. oh, that's bad. Like, it wasn't that bad, but I didn't know it was Nelly either. Right. But it's just funny. Like, everybody's like, his pain is so small. I it didn't look huge. like it. And it's like, damn, how big do y'all want it, bitch? <laughs> well, I guess they've all gotten so used to the the Nick Cannon and the Soldier Boy and all that. So now they just expect to get like slapped in the face. But it looked, I don't know. It didn't look that bad to me, but I, I, I didn't watch it, it that long. Average. It looked yeah. average to me. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It didn't look super tiny. <laughs> but people were like literally disgusted. Like, oh, it's so small. How do Man. you feel this? Man, Twitter will fuck up someone's self-esteem so fast. <laughs> like, that is so wrong. Yeah, they said he ran to delete it, but, you know, by then it was too late. Oh, it's too late. Twitter. They yeah, are dragging his little Peter Weeder, honey, and the bad hit job. I don't see anything wrong with either besides the fact that he posted it. Don't know why he posted it, but um, it wasn't given what he thought it was going to give because they're roasting him currently. Yeah, I don't believe that was an accident for one. I believe that he meant to do that on purpose because, I mean, he obviously everyone can see. Look what happened with Nick Cannon. With Dre. He was trying to trend more than likely. I don't know for sure, but that, that just that would seem more reasonable than just posting that on accident. Um, but I, I don't know. You see some crazy shit on Twitter also at the same time, so... That's very true. But yeah, I I believe it was on purpose. These folks do anything for attention, honey. Yeah, and it looked normal. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me, but I didn't, when I saw that, I didn't think, oh, what a little day. That wasn't the first thing that came to my mind, but whatever. (laughs) To each its own. Right. You know, some people like King Kong Long Dongs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but. All these people who got these opinions too, like, okay, well, you do a better job, or let you know, let's see what you got. You know, <laughs> people mm-hmm. really do the most, especially on Twitter. Twitter's crazy. You know, everybody on Twitter is beautiful, like Beyonce. They all fuck like porn stars. Let them. Say <laughs> that, that's what yeah. that's everybody's demo on Twitter. If you could really see me, I look like Beyonce. Okay, all right. Yeah. Man. Yeah, but then they're like profile picture. I don't know. I actually don't have Twitter, but I mean, I've seen like their profile picture will be like you know a cartoon or something. Right. But they all swear behind the profile. They're, you know, they're that guy or girl child. Yeah. But I can anyways, so we are here to talk about, oh my gosh, there's so much to talk about. But we just had to hit on the Nelly topic first because I just thought it was funny because every time. Yeah, we it's tradition at this point. <laughs> at this point. So I wonder next time we do a podcast, who's peeing, we'll see. We'll just have Who's to next? Who's <laughs> next? <laughs> <laughs> so we are here to talk about euphoria, honey. Okay. Mm. So first, let me tell you how I got hooked on Euphoria. Y'all know I've been out, you know, healing from surgery. So I've been binge watching a lot of shows. Everything from one of my favorite shows is Siren. I really love the mermaid show I was saying about. Love it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So binge watch that, binge watch some of Handmaiden's Tale. Just been watching a lot of stuff. So a lot of the young kids kept telling me like on Discord and Rejoice was saying, you need to watch Euphoria, you need to watch Euphoria. And so I finally said, okay, fine, let me go ahead and get into Euphoria. And I started watching season one um, about a week and a half ago. I binge watched the whole thing that week and I was blown away. And come to find out, my kids watch Euphoria. My youngest son watches Euphoria. And I'm just like, what in the world is going on? I've never seen nothing like this um, on television, just how real and almost too raw it is. Uh Um, So that was the first season. I mean, totally just blew me away with just everything, just the different characters, the fact that they had a backstory. I really loved that. Um, even characters like Kat Hernandez, the one who plays the plus size girl who lost her virginity uh-huh. and literally like just turned into a whore. But one thing <laughs> I love about Kat is that she's not your stereotypical fat friend. You notice that? No. Yeah, I love Kat and um, I love how there's like representation there, which mm-hmm. I will say sometimes when they add like plus size people in, which no, she's not your stereotypical, but Kat's also like. She's got a shape. She's real pretty. Like, she's mm-hmm. not. I like how they added her in, but also and sometimes. All her friends are pretty. Like, right. it's like, like, the whole friend group is pretty, and they're still willing to hang out with the plus size girl, which is, that's how it is in real life. Like, even in my clique, when I was younger, there was always like the, you know, a plus size girl in our clique. We didn't give a shit. If she was cool and funny, we hung with her. And that's yeah. really what it is in real life. Everybody's not a, you know, five foot 10 supermodel. Right. And she's also very smart. She's very articulate. Like she's got a really cool personality. So I love that character. Yeah. I mean, I I do worry for her because it's like when she lost her virginity, honey, she just went damn crazy. I said, fuck ass wild. That won't stop just fucking random men and giving head and cars. But the the (laughs) part that tripped me out when, um, when her friend caught her, remember when they were going through the breakup, Nate and Maddie. And she called her and she's like, you know, I need you right now. I need you to come, you know, meet up with me. And she was just like, no, I'm busy doing something. And she ends up hanging up and she starts giving that guy head in the car. And I'm like, wow, that was kind of, even though, you know, as a parent, I'm like, you know, disturbed, you know, the parent part of me is like, really? You don't even know this man. You're giving him head in the car. You know what I mean? Own ass man. But then the other side of me was like, I love the idea that the fat girl, you know, the plus size girl, whatever you want to call her, that she's so non-stereotypical. I love the fact that they made her say, you know what? I'm busy doing something else. I'm about to give some head and do me. Because usually when they have the quote unquote fat best friend in like TV shows, she's either the comic relief or she's the one to drop everything because in a way she's supposed to feel so grateful that somebody like Maddie would even accept her into the friend group. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the sidekick. Right. Like I should come running to her beck and call just for the fact that I'm even a part of this group. And she was like, uh, no, I'll talk no, to you later, I- Maddie. I'm about to get yeah. you. And I don't know, maybe what I got from that was that I feel like Maddie probably is always calling her like, oh, I need this. I need that. And she's like, bitch, I ain't got time for that. I got my own shit going on right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just I just thought her character was well developed in the first season. We haven't seen too much of her in the second season. I mean, she's in and out, but she hasn't really had a lot of screen time like she did in those episodes in the first season. So I just wanted to hit on Kat real quick. So moving on. This is the episode that has everybody on social media straight up bugging. So episode five dropped two days ago. So this was this past Sunday. And episode five was called Stand Still Like a Hummingbird. Uh, you wish I was different? So do I. This was a, the, one of the craziest episodes I've ever seen on television. I was blown away by Ruse, a.k.a. Zendaya, her acting ability. Yeah, she was acting her ass off because with me, of someone who's like literally, like I, when I'm seeing that, it's it literally felt like I was reliving my past because I, you know, literally went through the same shit. And I'm like, mm-hmm. she's not a, a, an addict, as far as we, you know, she's not a drug addict. And the way that she was able to act like when you're in withdrawal, just the anger and the venom you spit out and just the the way that she was acting with the withdrawals and stuff like she was really pre- like that is for real legit what mm-hmm. it is like in real life and she portrayed that like perfectly like she needs she an award did. for that 
performance. Yeah, she better get an Emmy at this point because oh, yeah. even watching her switch between rage and sadness, it, it was affecting me and triggering me emotionally for many different reasons. We'll get into that. But watching her snapping on her mother and saying, F you and where are the drugs? And then, you know, where's the suitcase and cussing out her sister and just going crazy. There's parts where you're angry at Rue. Like as a mother's standpoint, I want to beat her ass. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But then there's that part where then she pulls out that sadness and you feel bad for her. And you remember, one, she's somebody's child. Two, she's playing a 16-year-old who's going yeah. through a, a chemical withdrawal. And the fact that she's able to just go in and out of that, like the rage in her eyes. There were certain points where I looked at her and I was scared. So you knew when the mother says, I'm your mother, you don't scare me. It's almost like she had to reiterate that to herself as her mother because she was scared of her because I was scared for yeah. her. Yeah, when she kicked that damn door down, like she wasn't playing, right. and it, 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 like you said, the emotions, and then the the mother who was acting, like everybody in that scene, it was just so amazing. Like they all did such an amazing job, but Zendaya, like she just portrayed that role perfectly. And like you said, when she went from angry to sad, and like it, it's it's like you're really watching someone go through that, and you forget that this is like a script, and she's acting this out. Because mm -hmm. I know one of the things I asked you was, was it triggering for you when you watched it? Because like I said, certain parts were triggering for me. But oh, yeah, more, definitely. Yeah, like when we left off episode four, we see her put the fentanyl patch in her mouth. You know, she's like sucking on a fentanyl patch. And that kind of triggered me just for the fact as somebody who needs pain meds, you know what I'm saying, who is dealing with a chronic illness, it triggers me when I see people doing recreational drugs who don't yeah. need it, but then they're addicted. So then technically they do because they're addicted to it now. It, it still bothers me a lot, you know, because there's so many people out here who live in pain. And if they could choose to be healthy and not have to use the pain meds, they would switch places. So when you see somebody physically sucking on a fentanyl patch, that really like bothered me at the end of episode four. And then when she went through her whole withdrawals, it made me have sympathy for her, you know, because addiction is addiction, regardless yeah. of to a doctor's script, because you have a chronic illness or, you know, you got into a car accident or you're doing it recreationally. Once it gets out of control, it's the same path. Yeah. And it was such an accurate representation, like the way that, like I said, with, with the yawns and the watery eyes and, and you mm -hmm. and I had had a conversation about this. I was like, you know, when there, you know, the, all the, the glorification and stuff. And I was like, you know, I haven't seen anybody go through withdrawals yet. That's the only problem I have with this show is I have not Nobody's seen, they're doing, that. they're, they're doing a lot of drug use and I have not seen any withdrawals yet. I have not seen anybody, you know, like getting pimped out or anything. I, I haven't seen any of the real, real darkness. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll be damned the next episode. So, uh, it, and it was such a spot on representation, at least for what I've been through personally. Cause when you see a lot of people in TV or in movies and stuff going through withdrawals, you know, usually it'll show them sweating or throwing up and stuff, but it, it doesn't show the the little things that people who's went through it know, mm -hmm. like the yawns and the watery eyes. And some people sneeze or like the leg cramps and like she, they really got into it. So mm -hmm. it was definitely, it was definitely triggering for me to, to see her cause she did such a good job. Cause remember I even called you and I was like, <laughs> okay, you know, because withdrawal is different for different people, you know, especially yeah. when you're doing it recreationally, because at that point you have no control. You're just taking whatever, mixing drugs, all types of shit. Uh -huh. So with that, I remember I called and I was like, what was going on with her legs? Because that was something that was bothering me because I kept noticing it's like she had this limp. She was almost walking and running with like this constant limp. And I said, well, was it from her kicking the door? Like what's up with her leg? And you was like, no, that's like muscle cramps that happen. That's part of withdrawal. So the fact that they even put that into it is amazing. Like they really took the physical elements of what you go through during withdrawal, you know, like the constant diarrhea, um, her going uh -huh. from house to house, trying to use the bathroom, the, the constant stomach cramps. Like she really embodied that. I'm like, I don't know what type of Ezel crackhead superpowers that, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, but when I yeah. think she embodied 
a damn dope thing, crackhead, yes. whatever you want to call it. She really embodied that and it showed people the other side. So I can yeah. respect the writing is as disturbing as it was. That's fucking reality. Yes, that is. And the way that, like I said, it they're always getting high and it's showing, oh, they're, you know, having fun and they're, you know, they're numbing themselves and all that. It's so important to me to show like, no, this is really what happens. And especially when you're dealing with opiate abuse, mm-hmm. um, you're, a lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm just speaking on me personally, but a lot of times you're sick more than you're high. Mm. So that what she's going through, the physical aspect of it, when you really get into it like that, when you're really deep into opiate addiction, that's a very common thing that I know back when I was using, I went through that probably two, three times a week. And then also the way that she portrayed like just the screaming and the yelling because it, it, you're so irritable, you're so angry, like you literally will shoot venom, you will be manipulative, you'll do whatever you got to do because you're in hell. You feel so fucking horrible that you, I, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's like you're so angry at everybody. You mm-hmm. just want to not feel like that. Remember when she says, you hate me, mom? I hate myself too. Like I was like, who? Yeah, I know that made that me teary eyed. <laughs> Yeah, that it was, was. because she knew because the, the good part of Rue is still in there somewhere, yeah. you know, with all this stuff that's going on with her. She knows what she's doing is wrong, but it's like she can't control it, you know, and that's why some people say, like, you know, once you get that drug, it's like a demon in you. Yeah, like, it is. It is. Control it. It's almost like. I I swear, like, I know a lot of people think like the exorcist and shit like that, but it's really like you get possessed because it's like your spirit and your soul gets so numb down from the dope. Mm -hmm. And when, when you don't have it, like, obviously I know like the science behind it and the, you know, which they even talked about in the show, which I thought was really cool. But, you know, it, it literally is like, like I said, like you're possessed, like a damn demon is coming out and it wants what it wants. And it, the, there might be good in you, but it is so numb down. Yeah. No, I mean, it definitely is. And, you know, that part was just so, it was shown so accurately, you know, for me is what just really blew me away. And just the fact, like, she's very disheveled. She looks dirty. She looks unkempt, you know, from when yeah. we first seen her first season. I mean, she was, she's not a styler like some of the other girls on the show, but you can see like just how much she's just deteriorated. And yeah. it's also very interesting. The part when they showed the manipulation. Woo! Yeah. Oh yes. That yes. Was nice. <laughs> that when was. they showed like, you know, cause it shows you the mind of a drug addict, how they will gaslight you and make you feel like, you're in the wrong for even questioning them about their antics and the shit that they're doing. But for them, the, the, the ends justify the means and they'll gaslight you so bad to the point where you feel bad and guilty for even questioning their sobriety and the whole time they're getting high. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple podcasts, Spotify, Google play, Stitcher, Tuned in or anchorfm.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.